What's up everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be talking about my personal opinions on the market, where do I see the markets headed here over the next couple of days, over the next couple of weeks here, heading into the month of September, as well as some stocks and ETFs. I want to break down some for you, break down some charts that I'm personally looking at to trade for this upcoming month so you guys could potentially find some value in those find some tips and tricks on analysis and maybe use that to your benefit in your analysis so if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and without further ado guys let's get right into it so the S&P 500 ticker symbol SPX ended up closing up a whopping $1.88 in the green today, up 0.06%. So very little of a move there, nothing crazy whatsoever in terms of the S&P. The NASDAQ, on the other hand, was down 0.47% today, down $36.50. And if we look down here, you guys can see most of tech, instead of Facebook, um, you know, except for Facebook, rather, is red here. You see Netflix, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, all in the red, and Facebook was green today. If we go down here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, this one ended up closing up slightly green as well, just like the S&P, up $41.03, up 0.16% at the close. So overall today, guys, I feel like the markets were kind of slow. The markets were kind of boring, despite that drop that we saw um, you know, this morning. And if you guys were paying attention to that, I'll show you on this one day, one minute, what I'm talking about. We actually gapped up this morning. We saw a double uh, a double top, which is a bearish sign, right? The double top at 2940. And then other than this massive move to the downside of uh, about like 25 points roughly, you know, other than that, we were pretty much coasting for the rest of the day, you know, hovering between 29.15 and about 29.26 on the S&P 500. So really after lunchtime, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard, really after this big dump, there was nothing much going on in the markets. And overall, you know, we've closed uh, below we closed below 29.30, which was a resistance from yesterday. So that's not too strong of a close right now on the S&P. And let me explain why, guys. And this will get into a little bit on where I personally think the markets are headed right now. So we talked about how we're in a horizontal channel in yesterday's video and the previous couple of videos for the S&P and pretty much for the NASDAQ and the Dow Jones as well. And it's very obvious to see it here. The resistance is at 20. 930. We got hit there once in the past on the 8th of August, in the middle of August as well, towards the end of August, 20th of August, and now finally on the 30th of August, we're getting hit there yet again, guys. So this is like the fourth, fifth time that we've tested this level and we've been struggling under it. And really the, the close today um, confirms it as a resistance, right? So this is the level that I'm watching for this upcoming week. And just a reminder, guys, the markets are actually closed this Monday. So Tuesday is when we'll see our next trading day in a couple of days, which honestly gives us some time to prepare. But on Tuesday... You know, I want to see if we start to get rejected, if Sunday and Monday we see the futures, which the markets for the futures are open, if we see the futures trending red, this is going to be giving us a sign that the markets are headed down, right? The markets are headed down, and it's very important to use these futures to your advantage. So if we start to push down into the low 29s, maybe back down to 2,900, even into the 2,800s on Sunday night for the futures and Monday with the futures, this might be telling us that hey, we're headed down. We may be going all the way back down to that point where we triple bottomed at 28.50. And that's kind of how I'm going to be playing the markets on Tuesday, heading into Tuesday and really looking at the futures and being like, okay, let's say we get rejected. I might go with some, sh with some short ETFs, right? Some like SPXS, for example, or TVIX, which are both um, volatility. Well, TVIX is a volatility. It goes up when markets go down and the VIX is going up. But SPXS trades on the S&P and it goes up whenever the S&P is going down. 
forward. So that could be a scenario if we dump here, right? But let's say the futures are showing us breaking out. We start to go into the mid 2900s, maybe 2950. This could give us a, um, a sign to go along on the S&P on Tuesday. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for here to really determine where the markets are headed in general. But with the way the markets closed today, I think there's a lot more downside because, again, we closed under that resistance on the S&P, which is honestly kind of the benchmark that I look at for the entire market. And I'm sure a lot of you guys do that as well. And if you've been following the channel, you know that I do that um, pretty much every single video, right? That's why I start off with the S&P. So going over here, to the NASDAQ, guys, the NASDAQ is actually at a very tricky spot as well. And you can see we got hit at 77.50, right? 77.50 is this level of resistance that we actually got hit at in the middle of August as well as towards the end of August on the uh, roughly at the 20th of August. You can see this resistance here. We dumped. We held the triple bottom support at around 74.50. We popped up. We hit the 50S or rather the 180S SMA right Rather, we broke above that, and today it seems like we retested 77.50, and what happened, guys? We dumped. We had a red day today in the NASDAQ, and now it's bringing us down. So very similar situation, right? We have to look at the futures. What direction are we going to be headed? Um, you know, if we go down here, break the 50 SMA, this could be an SQQQ play, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is going down. So this is one that I'm definitely watching, um, you know, as a potential play this upcoming Tuesday. <coughs> so honestly, guys, once we break out, if we break out of this 180, this could be a bullish move. But the, the fact that we didn't get that yet, um, I just see a lot of downside here for the NASDAQ as well. So going here to the Dow Jones industrial average, and you can see it, it's literally the same thing here, right? A resistance at 26,375 to about 26,400 ish dollars. We got hit there on the 8th of August. We got hit there 13th of August, 20th of August, and now we're seeing a resistance yet again, guys. So if we dump, we could go short Nas or, uh, Dow Jones here, right? If we pop, this could be a bullish move, and we can maybe be going back up to all-time highs, right? That's in the cards right now. That's a scenario that could end up happening, especially if we pop. Let's say we get some more optimism regarding trade war, trade tensions, but honestly, I don't really see that happening. In my opinion, I see a lot more downside, especially once these tariffs start to kick in. Once the trade war escalates again, because I do think it's going to escalate again at some point, I don't think they're actually coming to a deal. I think they're just saying that to calm the markets, calm everybody out there, but... This could really just be the calm before the storm, honestly, guys. This really could be that. So overall, I just see more downside here unless we pop out and break that resistance um, on the Dow and quite frankly on the NASDAQ and the S&P as well. So that's kind of the market update right now. Again, things were slow heading towards the rest of the day. Um, that could be because it's a holiday weekend. Again, the markets are closed on Monday. People might be going out, vacationing beach house, summer house. I don't know what people are doing, right? Maybe they're just taking the rest of the day off, traveling with family. Maybe that's causing low volume in the markets, right? Which is why we didn't really see much activity later on in the day. But anyway, what are your thoughts on the market? I love talking to you guys down below in the comments. So let me know down below what your thoughts are on that. So overall today, guys, I didn't really make much trades. I didn't really do anything but hold my BAC trade from two days ago, or was that yesterday? Two days ago, I think. BAC, Bank of America, this is the number one stock I'm watching right now for a swing trade, right? I got in two days ago. I held it, right? I did not add more money today to it because I want to see how the markets end up opening on Tuesday. I might screw myself, right? If the markets take a big dump, this could definitely drag BAC, but that is the risk I am willing to take by holding this one over the weekend, right? We could end up popping up 50 cents a dollar on Monday or Tuesday rather, or we could dump. But the fact that I'm kind of up on my position 
position right now. Not up by a lot. I'm up by a little bit. I felt like I have the buffer right now as well as that 2% drop. Like what are the odds if what are the odds BAC drops 2%, 3% heading into Tuesday pre-market, right? So that's kind of why I feel comfortable holding it right now and overall it's still holding its trend. Honestly, guys, if we take a look here a bit closer on the 5 day 5 minute, this is a level I was watching. This yellow line here is the 180 SMA support. The fact that we held a higher low on it today and we closed above it, that gave me some confidence in holding this one over the weekend. But let's say we were to dump heavily heading into market close, you know, I probably would have cut. At this point, I would have broken even, but I would have just taken my money out of the stock just to play it safe, right? But the fact, again, that we held it technically, um, this technical spot, you know, I'm, I'm feeling comfortable holding it. And for those of you guys that don't know, the whole idea with BAC right now is to swing trade it with a target sell at about $30. That's the ideal target sell, but I'd probably start shaving profits once we started to get closer to the 180 SMA resistance here on the four hour chart. You know, that's probably putting us at 2850 to around 29 ish dollars for the stock. So that's a level I'm watching for BAC overall. All, I'm liking it. A lot of potential for profit upwards of 8, 9, 10% with not as much for a uh, reward or risk rather. There's not much risk. There is risk obviously with everything you're trading and everything you're investing in, but the reward here outweighs the risk in my personal opinion. So Tesla guys, oh my goodness guys, Tesla today it literally made the move that I talked about in yesterday's video. It was it's kind of lucky to be honest, but did you do you guys remember drop a comment if you guys remember me saying this. Tesla, it could fill up to the 180 SMA is what I was saying on yesterday's video on this 4-hour chart. Yesterday we were trading right here and I was saying Tesla still overall downtrending, right? It's still overall downtrending based off on this trend line. That's what I said in yesterday's video, right? But if it were to pop breakout, we might fill up to the 180 SMA, and that's exactly what ended up happening, right? This wasn't um, just like a move without any catalyst to it. There was a catalyst, and let me show you guys what that catalyst was. So take a look at this. The regular, regulatory body in charge of cars in China has announced several Tesla vehicles will be exempt from its purchase tax, which should help offset an upcoming tariff. The Ministry of Industry and Information Technology um, granted ex ex exemptions for more than a dozen Model 3, Model S, and Model X vehicles. Earlier this month, China said it would reinstate some car tariffs it paused in April, including a 25% levy on, on vehicles from the U.S. and a 5% tariff on auto parts. So overall, guys, these are set to come into force on December 15th as part of a wave of tariffs. China announced in response to the latest U.S. round of levies on imports from the Asian superpower. Tesla and other car makers face total tariffs of as much as 50% on vehicles imports, uh, vehicle imports <clears throat> in China. So overall, guys, this is a pretty good catalyst that ended up driving up stocks, uh, Tesla stock up today very heavily from 20, uh, 223 all the way up to about 233. That's when that catalyst I'm guessing came out it popped the stock up very aggressively and this is a good sign right because you know these tariffs that are going to affect the automakers that's obviously going to affect their bottom line their profits and that has a lot of pressure on the stocks of these automakers of course and Tesla and the fact that they're getting this tax cut now that's a pretty good sign, in my opinion. And short term here, if we pop out of this 180 SMA now and we hold it as a support, this stock could end up breaking out with a, with a target maybe passing the resistance 240, maybe 245. That could be a point in time where we can end up selling Tesla if we do pop out, get an entry point here, and maybe ride it up to the next resistance again at 245. So I'm kind of watching Tesla now. This is pretty interesting stuff here. <clears throat> BAC. Um, you guys did very well yesterday, not today guys, but you guys could be setting up for a pop here. 
you know, we're holding that 50 SMA. Natural gas is doing quite well. If you guys look at the chart, you know, we're starting to reverse finally to the upside. We're riding that 50 SMA. We're pulling back. Now, at this point, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, natural gas needs to break 230, hold that as a new support, and then potentially fill up to the next spot, which is $2.40. So from 230 to 240, that's around a 4% move. And since you guys is a 3x leveraged ETF, you can go to you guys and see this for yourself. Leveraged ETN, rather, you guys goes up 12%, right? Or, or rather, yeah, 12% if natural gas goes up 4%. And that's roughly, right? So that is kind of what I'm watching heading into this upcoming week. I don't want to keep this video too long because typically Friday, people's are, people are clocked out. People are checked out. They want to just go home and not even think about this stuff, right? But for those of you guys that are sticking to the end, why not drop a comment? Let me know that you stuck till the end. Type in stuck to the end. I really appreciate you guys from the bottom of my heart. But that's pretty much it for the video. So if you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like. Drop a comment. Again, if you stuck to the end, let me know. And also let me know some stocks and ETFs that you guys want me to talk about in Sunday's video. I'd love to do that for you. So if you guys have a great weekend, let me know what your plans are down below. I hope you guys have a great one. Peace out.